is building your boat compatible with the idea of having options? Based on what we've learned and what I've heard so far, I would say that burning your boat is contradictory to the idea of having options. If we have to go with the theme of burning your boats, it's literally telling us that when you're doing something, do it wholeheartedly and don't give yourself a reason to have a plan B. Because if you have a plan B, chances are, you're not going to full see your plan A through fully because you're going to give it a half effort knowing very well that you've got plan B. I think the same applies to options. If we give ourselves options, are we really burning our boat? Or are we just sugarcoating the idea of burning your boat with, but what if it doesn't work? I still need options. But I'll tell you where burning your boat does become compatible with the idea of options. I think when we think of burning the boat and its compatibility with options, it becomes a question of which boat am I going to choose to burn? I think that is the only place where it is compatible. Because once we make the decision to burn our boat, we need to go with the option that we've chosen. If burning our boat, option one of burning our boat is continuing with our nine to five job, great. Every other boat we burn, if it means becoming an entrepreneur, an option between staying in your job and becoming an entrepreneur, and you choose to burn the boat of becoming an entrepreneur, you have made an option. And in that case, it is compatible. But if you're looking at burning your boat and still having options on how you can get off the island, then no, burning your boat is not compatible with options. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. Toastmaster for today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're now at the exciting part of our program, which is the evaluation section. You know what they say about evaluations? It's a feedback of champions or oh, it's the breakfast of champions actually but tonight it's going to be our supper so let's ignite those stoves if it's the prema stove ignite it it's okay if you're brine tonight ignite it let's get into the evaluations so why do we do evaluations in toastmasters in a nutshell the main purpose of the evaluations is to give constructive feedback to our speakers that can help them grow and become better speakers. I want to quote roughly something that was said to me in a meeting I was in early on while giving evaluations. One of the speakers, a delegate, it was a speech club program, mentioned, when you're on stage and delivering your speech, your speech is the most amazing and beautiful thing in the world. But when you get to deliver that speech and get somebody to share with you what your areas of improvement are, you become aware of the biases that you have and the things that you miss out in your speech. And that is why we give evaluations as Toastmasters. Because as speakers, if you're on stage, if you're delivering in a boardroom, we don't have that advantage of delivering what we have to say and somebody coming to us immediately after to give feedback. In Toastmasters, we have that opportunity I always think of, I always say we, think we should always think of everybody in the room as our audience. And as you speak, everybody is evaluating you and people do want to share. And people like me and Dominic have the opportunity to share our feedback with you as speakers. Always remember in the closing, feedback from the evaluations is always subjective to our experience as the evaluators listening to you. And it is not a reflection of you as an individual. As an individual, I believe you are made in the image of a divine being, if you believe it. If you're an evolutionist, you have evolved to be the perfect being. But as a speaker, you are imperfect. Your speeches, our speeches are imperfect. And that is where evaluations come into play. So that is my two minutes on why evaluations are so important. Let's move on to the crux of today, 
the evaluation of our speakers. We had two evalu evalu we had two speakers, and so we're going to have two evaluators. Our first speaker for today was Mpendulo, and I will quickly go through my feedback on Mpendulo's speech. For our timer, it is a th two to three minute evaluation. Do correct me if I'm wrong, yes? It's two to three minutes, all right, perfect. So Mpendulo, your speech, sustainability and ESG, our past, present and future. The purpose of your project was for you to give us an overview of the plan that you had for a project that you've been planning. Key word in there was an overview. Key things that you had to speak on was the plan and the team that would be part of your project. What I loved about your speech is that you met the speech objectives in terms of giving us an overview. You told us about the ESG being a legacy program. You spoke about women being part of the project. You spoke about the phase and you even told us who is on your team. So when it came to the project objectives of an overview, you have met those objectives. But there are areas of improvement and these are my observations. I felt as though your project, your speech left me with more questions than answers. As a level four speaker, I would have loved to hear you go into a little bit more detail and deliver a bit of a more organized speech. For example, you spoke about creating an ESG legacy pro program project that empowers women. One of the things in my head was, why this project? Why are women your target market? Why is it important that you chose ESG? Why did you choose women? I mean, it was a two to three minute in a plan. And so I'm sitting here from the perspective of you are trying to influence me and convince me, sell this idea of a plan to me. So these are questions that came up. Secondly, you spoke about the different phases in the project. You spoke about phase one particularly, which was meeting with the team and further developing the idea. The moment you spoke of phases, one of the questions that popped up was, okay, how many phases are they then in this project? So an area of suggestion of improvement around you, I would suggest being very specific with your plan. Tell us about the project. Tell us why the project is important and also share with us how many phases are involved in the project. Moving on to the team, this one you delivered spectacularly. You told us who the different people in the team were. You spoke about the different representatives and who they were. One thing that did come up on this note, okay, there was actually nothing on this note, but something that I thought you did really great was as you spoke about the team, a, a question popped in the chat and it asked, what is ESG? And like a professional speaker, you saw that, you addressed it and I thought that was beautiful. You spoke into the audience needs as it arose in the moment. But at the same time, it also highlighted something that you left out from your preparation, which was the assumption that everybody in the room knew what ESG was. So in future, define the terms of your speech as you go into it. But overall, I thought your speech was fantastic. I thought it met the project objectives it just needs a little bit of fine tuning. And I'm looking forward to hearing the full plan on this. Thank you, Matthew, for a brief evaluation. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Firstly, I would like you to picture the scene. Just imagine this. Currently, we're at the Oscars. Yes, the Oscars. And it's 2022, we just survived the pandemic. And so we are, for the first time, we are hosting the Oscars in a hybrid form. So please give it up for our viewers live streaming, live streaming from their homes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kalabachi Konde and I will be your host tonight. And it is my duty to announce the winner of the world's most valuable brand. And the nominees are Nike, Netflix, Apple, Adidas, YouTube. And the winner 
of the world's most valuable brand is your personal brand. Please give it up for yourself. In the words of Brian Tracy, a brand is a promise. A promise that you make to every single person that you interact with. Your employees, your friends, your employers, your colleagues, every single person that you interact with. Did you know that there are people who have tremendous potential, but unfortunately, because of the way they are perceived by others, they can't realize that potential? Your personal brand is your personal share price on the stock market of life. When the share price is high, people will invest in you. People will trust you. For example, I use Apple products because I trust that Apple will fulfill its promise of delivering a product that is seamless, simple, and secure. Why should people interact with you? Why should they buy your product? Why should they hire you? Why should they go out with you? Why should they choose to do business with you? So in order to, to build your personal brand, there are three important things that you should know. And number one, know what you stand for. What are your values? What are you passionate about? What do you care about? But most importantly, what is your why? You see, I was very, I am very fortunate to work for a company that cares about your, my personal brand. And so the company had what we call a brand engagement engineer to take us through a branding journey. Her name is Simone and she's amazing at, at what she does. And Simone took us through TerraFlow's branding journey. And in the beginning, the first questions she asked us were, what are your values? What difference will you make? But most importantly, what is your why? And this is how I discovered my why. Word of advice, you will not discover this. You will not discover the answer to this question overnight or in two days or in two weeks or in a month. It might take you some time, but do the inner work. So I asked some of my friends, why are you friends with me? What is, what, what is my superpower? What is my strength? And so after doing some digging, the common theme of being the guide came about. And so then, then I understood that is my why, to be a guide, to be the mentor. So know what you stand for. Number two, know where you are. Make a list of your current achievements. And it could be professional or personal. It could be as little as, I had for, for me, I went bungee jumping and that's a personal achievement for me. So make a list of your current achievements and your awards. Sit down with your family and friends and ask them, how would you describe me? What are some of my characteristics and traits that you admire about me? Know where you are. Number three, know where you are going. Brian Tracy calls it back from the future thinking. If three years from now, a study were to be carried on you, what would that report say? What, how would they describe how you treated other people? What words would they use to describe you? Find that one leading attribute and ask yourself, how can I act differently today to ensure that people associate me with this attribute all the time? So the three things you should do, know, know what you stand for, know where you are, and know where you're going. These are the three foundational things that you need to know. And now I'm going to give you four things that you can do to build your personal brand. Number one, specialize. Find your area of specialization. It could be a product, it could be a service, it could be a skill, just find that one thing. Become the go-to person for that specific thing. When people ask, where can I get this kind of product or where can I get this kind of service? Your name should be the first to come to mind. Specialize. Number two, leverage your network. Your network is who you know. Your reputation is who knows you. Find people in your field that are doing the things that you aspire to do and follow their footsteps. I mean, they do say that success leaves tracks. And they also say that your network is your net worth. Leverage your network. Number three, raise your profile. 
become a leader, you should become recognized as the most skilled, the most respected, the most knowledgeable in this field, in this area. Visibility is key. Speak at conferences, write blogs, just ensure that you're visible because the more visible you are, the more people will remember you and the more likely you are to be recommended. So visibility is key. Raise your profile. And last but not the least, be authentic. Be yourself. And this is why it is, so, it is so important to know yourself because this is how you stand out. And this is what makes you unique. All your flaws, your personality, everything. Embrace all of that and be unapologetically you. So those are the four things you can do to build your personal brand. Remember, your brand is a promise. You are basically stating that if you do business with me, if you work with me, if you go out with me, this is the person that you will experience. This is the person that you will get. So I urge you to ask yourself, what promise are you making? Be intentional about building a positive personal brand because the world's most valuable brand is your personal brand. Now, please give a hand for yourself. Thank you.